last week, I suggested as a community that we collaborate on the world's biggest piece of systems or minimalist music. And the entries so far have been absolutely extraordinary. If this is news to you, basic premise is I've created some pulses and some chords, some files that you can load into your door, whether it be Cubase, Ableton, Pro Tools, or Logic, or indeed a very simple instructions as to how you can build a session in your door of choosing so that you can then output a contribution, a layer, some instruments, chords, bass, top lines, counterpoint, that kind of stuff to this system's piece. Please do join in. I think it's going to be extraordinary. And I hope other devs join in. Sonic Couture, 8DO, if you want to take part, I think it'd be just a lovely opportunity for us to all come together. The one thing I would say thus far, it's, it's piano book, and it'd just be great to get more pianos out of you. So what I'm going to do is create an awesome new instrument that I think may be of assistance to you. More of that later. First, February, shortest month of the year, but you didn't come up short at all. By golly, let's have a look at the highlights. And there's a reason to celebrate today, although it's somewhat for me a muted celebration. As a father of two daughters and one son, I'm always very disappointed to see the gender imbalance that really does blight our industry. And Piano Book is really no exception because today, it's taken this long, we have our first entry from a lady by the name of Catherine Hillier, who I had uh, the pleasure of meeting on the London Walk. Absolutely fantastic. And she's created this subtle clarinet. During my time at Falmouth University, it came as a bit of a surprise to me just how many of my course mates were interested in and wanted the sound of a clarinet as part of their projects in some form or another. Instead of using my clarinet to only play classical pieces, which I had done prior, I was able to experiment with it in many different ways I had never considered before. As I learned more about the door and filtering live instruments through software, the idea of using a clarinet's warm, rustic sound to create interesting soundscapes, experimenting with multiphonic notes, me likey, breathing techniques and improvisation really appealed to me. So here I have created a soft, subtle clarinet sample with an ebb and flow dynamic texture. I've tried really to highlight its natural woody sound to add a new, interesting layer to a musician's work. I love that you've used the word splosh to mean reverb. Um, I do hope that's catching on. absolutely fantastic. It's almost like you've wetted your finger and you're rubbing clarinet players on the top of their heads. So hopefully the first of many, many contributions for the many incredibly talented female composers out there. So Anne, and both Anne's if you're watching, Carly, Ninita, Homai, Wendy, Lisa, Debbie, Anushka, Danny, Isabel, the list is endless. Please uh, do step up to the plate and contribute to this wonderful resource for uh, the composing fraternity. We're all nerds, all of us, not just boys. In proof of that, KD Richardson looks to have a really nerdy setup that I'm very excited by. So this is a synthesizer with issues. The thing has got an attitude. I sampled a simple, harsh metallic patch on the legendary Buckler Music Easel at the Evergreen State College in Olympia. So let's have a listen to this. <laughs> Oh, you've got different Mooga Fugas we can put through as well. Next up is Jasper Trim's Lyra Pad, and I picked this because I'm jealous of you, Jasper, just as I'm also jealous of Trevor Morris, who yesterday on his Instagram account gloated at the fact that he had got one of these. This is one of the my takeaways from this year's NAM. It's an instrument created from sampling a bizarre Russian synth called a Lyra 8 or Ganismic synthesizer. The Lyra 8 is an unusual synth because it has no filter, envelopes, or keyboard entry, just eight oscillators and individual pitch knobs. So let's have a listen to that. Is the glide created by the EXS? Let's hear it straight.
Joshua Meltzer again completely knocks it out of the park with this extraordinary choir. You created the choir just with your voice. You used a Shure KSM32 up close. Don't know what those mics are, I'll have to check that out. As I wanted it very soft and intimate sounding. I used a Neve 1073 Pre with a UA1176, so tickling it to tape. I recorded it to how some are recording the piano using the cycle of fifths. My range vocally is a lot less than the piano, obviously, so it did not take long. I did this process several times and layered until it sounded close to a choir. I can't wait to hear this. I, mean, I think it's a really good note from Joshua. If you feel that you're, you, you don't quite have the patience for big old pianos and stuff. Getting music boxes and little xylophones and stuff like that, they take minutes to sample because the range is so small. Or rather, you can get even more detail and practice kind of deep sampling with those. Anyway, I digress. So let's have a look at Joshua's Quiet Quiet, or Listen, rather. Simply stunning, absolutely stunning. We've got some swells here as well. AMB2 by Liam McLeod. Last year I had the idea to amplify my cheap music box I had bought whilst I was looking for interesting things to sample. I already loved the Labs music boxes, so I didn't see any reason to try and capture a normal sounding music box. One day I had the bright idea to amplify it. So in what I can only imagine is the least conventional way possible, I played the music box through my Fender amp. I used my guitar pickups to send the signal through my pedals and then into the amp. It sounds like a great idea, which is, as you might imagine, resulting in quite a lot of unwanted noise. Still, the results were interesting and I found myself enjoying the sample instruments I made. However, I recently got myself a cheap stick-on pickup and tried this little experiment again, this time using my Zoom H1N audio recorder instead of the SM57 I used last time with the hope of minimising any noise by effectively eliminating the entire signal chain. <laughs> Such an awesome sound. Just going to make it a little bit stereo with a stereo delay. Almost sounds like a, one of those first digital synths. Next up, Tim. Oh, cheapest. I'm so sorry in advance, Tim. Did you? Did you not? Did you Following on from last year's English classic, I have great pleasure in introducing the English felt. Same piano, different recording technique. After watching Christian's felt piano experiments, I thought I'd have a go myself. I cut three pieces of felt to the size that I needed due to the design of the piano and stuck the felt to the inner workings of the piano with blue tack. High tech. Absolutely brilliant. I love a little bit of pimping of the piano. I know someone who uh, recently got, you know, those kind of waxy earplugs you get to shut out the noise and put those in between strings. I think that'd be quite a fun experiment too. Oh, it's absolutely heartbreaking. So whilst we're on the theme of ladies, a huge congratulations and brilliant moment for Hilda to win the Oscar this year for Best Original Score. And this instrument was inspired by her incredible work on films such as Joker and I, her scores for Chernobyl just blew my mind. This is by Jacob Maloney. So you took recordings made by your course mate James Blunden, which was uh, recordings of a harpsichord in one of the practice rooms at Leeds College of Music, and then morphed them into awesome samples through various distortions, reverbs and other other effects. So let's have a listen. And it is. Come 
coming to a rom-com near you soon. But Thomas Field has come up with this amazing idea of the water trumpet and double bass. So I had an urge to create some changing, ebbing and flowing long notes and this is what I ended up with. Inspired by Spitfire Audio's Evo idea, I created a set of notes that move and change slightly over time. To me, it reminds me of the, the, the late work of Talk Talk and Mark Hollis. So Connor Sawchuk, who I believe I've seen, you took part in some of the competitions. Uh, I was very excited by David's CP70. This uh, belongs to your friend David, an absolute mad lad of an electric guitar player and a recording engineer. The opportunity to record this was very impromptu and imprecise, and so there are lots of little errors in the procedure. It'll make it sound more realistic. Now, I've really enjoyed this because it takes me back to the, the 80s when this thing was the, the touring piano du jour. However, I'm, I don't know if it's my system. I'm having problems with it kind of breaking up on certain notes. I don't know if that was intentional, but I, I can't really get to the bottom of it. I don't know if anyone else is experiencing this. It seems to be something to do with the polyphony, and I don't know why I can't spot what's going wrong with it. Do let me know if it's just me, something wrong with my system, and I'll look into it, and apologies if I've misrepresented the piano, but that's something that maybe members of the community could help with. In line with something I'm going to be preparing for you later, at last, a loud piano, and by golly, it's loud. It's this kind of variety that's going to become really useful when we start building this production music library. So, where are we at with this systems piece for Piano Day? If you recall, in this film linked below, I requested that people basically submit their layers, their instruments, their tracks to YouTube using the handle Piano Book Piano Day 2020. And if we have a look at what has been submitted so far, it is simply remarkable. I mean, there's even a guy with a lawnmower. Having said that, if there was one thing I would request is there's not enough of, well, these things, pianos. Uh, and then I was kind of listening to the piano book catalogue and we've got a lot of mellow pianos, a lot of felt pianos. And I think with this kind of system stuff, you need stuff that's a little bit brighter, a little bit louder. So I thought I'd do a dedicated systems grand, not playing massively short notes like like that, notes with meaning of a, I guess it's kind of piano mercato. This piano is in a beautiful room. The only problem is it's springtime and the birds really want to shag. There's also a, a cockerel that I would really like to murder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the DPA mics that I have permanently set up within this piano. So hopefully the, the kind of the level of the piano and the lid being closed and the proximity of the DPA mics should basically cancel out the noise of these randy sparrows that we've got around here. I'm using the computer just to supply me with some clicks and I'm gonna be using my sound devices Mix Pre 3 uh, which is just, it's just permanently set up. It's great to have something like that next to your piano. So if ever you come up with an idea, you can capture it and it is kind of broadcast quality if you can, can't find that magic again. What I'm gonna do is go up in minor fourths from this low C here, and I'm gonna do three round robins, three dynamic layers. So, no, maybe not that quiet. So kind of MF through to FF. Still on. So we'll take a look at that system's grand at the end of this film. Talking of films, Piano Book isn't just about these instruments, it's not just about the demos, it's also about some incredible YouTubers. 
Here's another fantastic video from David Hillowitz. This Marxophone is a fretless zither played via a system of metal hammers, and it was invented by Charles Marx in 1912. It features two octaves of double melody strings on the key of C major. Absolutely love it. It's a beautiful recording, David, beautifully sampled and, and realised. I think what I really like about it, it doesn't have the Cold War connotations of the Chamberlains and the, the Dulcimers. It's slightly softer and imagined for kind of fantasy fairy tale, it being absolutely stunning. So we've also got a swarm. Can't wait to hear this. Dan Keane returns with some more thrumming textures presented in his very philosophical style. He's an absolute YouTube natural, but also an amazing samplist. This is his amped ukulele. Absolute beautiful. I want to hear this down an octave. What I love about what Piano Book is facilitating is not only just a great community, but also I really do think composer's writer's block is just a thing of the past. Even if this doesn't end up on your master, it'll introduce you and lead you in different ways that your kind of normal, boring samples won't. I'm sure of it. Last but not least, John Meyer Music and his just phenomenal looking YouTube videos takes us through sampling his Kawhi Felt Piano. So the theme this week is more pianos. And some of you have asked, can you put more than one entry up? Of course you can. In fact, I'm gonna put one up every week. This week, I'm gonna add another piano along the lines of what I hope people might be able to do with the new system's grand. Problem is, if you take a look at this part of the performance, the timing gets a bit sloppy. And as I mentioned, I'm not averse to time correction. So I had a go here. And then another go. which sounds kind of almost like time stretch, but I think it's about finding that cross fade sweet spot. And that, as they say, is probably good enough for jazz. Alternatively, I could simply just load up the systems grand. No saucy crows to be heard there at all. In fact, I would say the DPA mics are the lowest noise floor I've ever experienced, something to be investigated in future episodes. That Systems Grand is available to download in the link below, as are all these amazing instruments, pianobook.co.uk. So thanks, as always, for your amazing enthusiasm about not only the Systems piece, but the instruments, the demos, and the YouTube. So big thumbs up for all of these efforts. We'd be much appreciated. Do subscribe if you haven't done already, and ding that bell so you can get notified the next time I put a video up. There's going to be a very special hybrid modular Monday coming soon where I maybe do a layer of modular stuff for the systems piece and I've got a really exciting fly on the wall of me doing a session for inside number nine. So lots of stuff coming your way soon. Thanks as always and see you soon.